This is part two of my upgrades, modifications, and hacks. And the reason I'm doing this is to put everything in one place so you guys don't have to look back through a hundred horrible videos to find one little tip. <laughs> and, uh, and also I want to say that you don't have to buy any of this stuff and a lot of this stuff wouldn't work for you, but I'm just sharing it. Maybe it'll give you some ideas of your own. I thought I'd start first with the, with the front door or the side door and these, um, there's a called, I think, OB wet shower holders or something like that. They're actually meant for the shower, but we put them right here. This idea came from Mark Steffen and he, um, and he put his flip-flops in them and I thought, what a great idea. And I also keep our spare maps in there. So let's come on in, John, and we'll get out of the wind. I have another, it looks like a long list, but I think it'll go faster than my outside uh, improvements and modifications. Some maybe not improvements, but um, last week was on the outside, this week is on the inside. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna ask you guys a question to help out one of our viewers who had a question. And I'm thinking some of you, some of you might have come up with a, an idea to solve his problem. Okay, we're gonna start in the front with the most expensive upgrade we did inside the van. The first thing that we did when we got the van was notice how awful the dashboard was on the Mercedes. So remember everything, the van is a Mercedes van and so all of the components up here were Mercedes. And so we took it down to uh, the one auto sound place in our area that everybody recommends, uh, Beach Auto Sound, I think they're called on Beach Boulevard. Uh, and we went there and replaced the, the really antiquated system that Mercedes had with uh, a new Kenwood audio and uh, as a Garmin. Uh, it also, we also added an alarm because that was really surprising that this rig did not come with an alarm. And so we added that, we added a dash cam and it's nice to have a dash cam. All, you, all it takes is one accident and you'll be glad, oops, I just triggered it. <laughs> and you'll be glad you had that. Also, it helped, uh, I caught a deer, a deer crossed right in front of us when we were on our way up to Crater Lake one year, and I was able to catch that. Um, and that's where I, I didn't realize that the deer pretty typically run right alongside of you, and then they dart in front. So that was interesting. <laughs> kind of like your two-year-old. <laughs> yeah, like a two-year-old. Okay, let's see, what else do I have on here? Um, and new speakers too, so they also added. And that, the total was about $3,000, which is a lot of money. Uh, Beach Auto Sound is also the same ones that did the tinting on our front windows. Okay, now the other thing up here, the kind of a hack. The other thing, the older version, this is a 2016 chassis on a 2018 uh, Pleasure Way Ascent. And so we, the, this is the cup holder. And on our very first trip, uh, John was taking off and he had his coffee in here and it spilled. So we had uh, coffee spilled on the new carpet all the way back to the back seat. <laughs> I'm glad it was John and not me. So uh, one of the viewers uh, I think had recommended uh, this cup holder and it's, it's not pretty. The installation's not pretty, but uh, it's served its function. It's, it's been pretty good. But the new, Mer the new Mercedes has a much improved dash. They have cup holders everywhere. But they still have these stupid little cup holders up front that the only thing you'd put in there, I think, is some change, loose change. That's about all it's good for. And then anytime you see this black felt thing here, that the purpose of that is to block the glare because I usually have my dash, not my um, GoPro camera up here. And otherwise you get a lot of glare from all the stuff that you, that you tend to store inside of these things. So one more thing I added up front is this cable organizer. And uh, you may not have a problem with cables, but I'm always charging all my cameras and the phones and iPads, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so this I found at an auto supply store. Uh, this will be linked in my Amazon store. They have a smaller version. It's about that wide. And then this taller version. And that has uh, worked out pretty well. I mean, it's still ugly, but it works pretty well. And I almost forgot, we have these weather tech mats that are very dirty right now. But uh, we got those before we went up to Alaska. 
because the, the vehicle comes with carpet and of course that's not going to last very well unless you don't use your van for camping and if the wind doesn't blow this out i did add a little uh, lock on this door here it's really not obviously it's not going to keep anybody from getting in there because they could go in through here i'm sure they could pick it really fast but maybe it'll slow somebody down i don't keep anything valuable in there it's really more for maybe it'll slow them down while they're trying to figure out what's in there so that's it up here in the front oh elbow yes and this idea came from pam and love the el the they call this uh elbow friend this is these are really good this has been really great the back of the seat is a seat back organizer and uh, that's great for maps and my extra glasses and I have some mosquito mosquito hat things there and a first aid kit is in there pencils pens that sort of stuff the next obvious thing is our van shelf and this is the second rendition the first one was George at Humble Roads and that was fine and that was very inexpensive it was just like a wire rack and uh, you created your own brackets with some L brackets and they the installation is pretty easy because it just goes into this little hook here behind the whatever that plastic stuff is and then it hooks in here but um, but then I was watching a video um, what do they call themselves now they used to be called adventure in a backpack and now it's called explorist life and they did a, a video for Vancellary on this Vancellary kit. Uh, I think it's I think it's a good kit, but I think it's a little priced a little too high. It's like $100, which I think is a bit high for just because all you get is the four brackets and the paper template. But you really need a paper template, I think. So this has worked out really well. I think I used half inch uh, plywood and then I put in front here uh, a piece of velcro I just stapled it in so that I can hang my insulated curtain uh, right here and let's see up here and, and the reason <clears throat> I, I've mentioned this before that the reason I like this one over the um, the other one is because uh, especially in Alaska those roads are pretty rough and sometimes stuff would fall down the front uh, but we only put lightweight stuff up there Okay, up here on the shelf, this is, we store bedding and towels and things like that up here, but I want to show you some of the gadgets that I've just pulled out of here uh, that I really like. This is a, called Sky Genie, this fan, or is that what it's, yeah, Sky Genie. It's an oscillating fan. Oh, it's great. <laughs> and uh, it, it's charged with, a, you know, it has a little charging port over here. So that works really well when you need just a little bit more circulation. So you may have to get two of them, otherwise you'll fight over it. And what else do I have up here? Nothing right now, just some towels. Okay. And then over here I have our, these are the first uh, suction cup hooks that I used and they work great for keys. Sometimes we'll hang our, our trekking poles on them when we come in from a hike. John will hang his hats there. And they, hang, they will stay really well against glass or uh, very smooth surfaces, mirrors, things like that. But after maybe a month or so, they will fall off. So almost anything that's a suction cup will fall off. Um, down here, I have the, uh, we carry a, our drinking water, and I just applied a piece of Velcro to the wall here to keep it from flopping around and falling out. And then on the, right behind the, Driver's side is this little indentation. I wish that Mercedes did something with that, <laughs> or maybe Pleasure Way builds that. I don't know. It just is an empty space, and it would be nice to be able to have maybe something there to help organize stuff. But I put this little uh, cargo bag, and it's just on with Velcro, and it's, that's been fine. It does sometimes peel off a little bit there. That works well, and I can, that's where I keep the owner's manual and that sort of stuff. Just below the shelf, the cab shelf, is where we store our pillows. I found this little $10 cargo net and I hooked it on. I've since, I, I, you know, it only came with four hooks, with four of these guys right here. I found that this 
I found some washers that I put together and was able to hook the rest of it on there. But since then, I found some hooks. I'm trying to think what they're called. I may order some more, but uh, but that's working out really well. And if John hits his head on it, it's soft. <laughs> These little iron hooks were made for us in. Canada, we stopped at this really interesting kind of a heritage museum where we camped and it was a great camping spot. I'd love to go back there again. Uh, but uh, this, the blacksmith there was super nice and he made these for us and we hang our towels on there to dry. So that works well. Might as well. I talked about the bathroom just a few days ago and I don't know if I showed, I don't, yeah, I think I showed the shower head. It's, this is the same company that made the shower head on there that I use in the outside shower but you know as I as I mentioned the one I like I like the one out there because you would bend the head up and down and that's what made the water turn on and off and it's a real shame that they don't make that one anymore and this is the one I don't think they make this one anymore I think they've changed the design again And then uh, again, up here, I put those same OB shower things in here. There's my new, uh, my new shelf, my storage shelf, broom and dustpan, the uh, two little racks that I got at Target, these plastic things. Oh, uh, one of our viewers who's in Canada, she doesn't have access to a Target, and she said a cereal box fits really nicely in that same space. And so she just cut it off and painted it or covered it in some way. And that works really well for right behind that shelf. So that's another idea. And oh, and the, uh, we, we did add a, the toilet paper holder, which things I've covered before. This is the, uh, and of course the bamboo mat. We had a teak mat before, but it was smaller. And so it was really nice uh, when Neil at Ultramobility pointed out this bamboo mat, we ordered it right away. And then we keep our bath mat underneath it. Um, and that's probably something you'd want to do because rumor has it that you could crack this plastic floor with the bamboo mat if you don't do that. These guys are these little stick on, they don't even stick on. It just hangs on there with tension, I guess. And that's from Ulta, the beauty supply place. And those are for, you know, organizing your makeup and stuff. And that fits really well. It just hangs, you know, clings to the wall of the, this little, you know, this plastic material. And then, of course, the, uh, the grip, this grip, which has never come off. We've had that on there for probably six months or so. That's really great. And then the bug zapper. Love the bug zapper. Wouldn't want to go anywhere without that guy. Audio confirmation of the kill. <laughs> yes, John. Am I going? Now, I think I did this, John, before we went to Alaska, I think. I put a, um, okay, so, oh, also, one of the first things I did when we got the van was remove the, here, give me that. I removed the back there's a, when you get the van, it comes with this false back. And I took that out and gained some storage for all of our stuff. So I was able to put in this little shelf here where I keep our trash bags and gain some more space for cups. So that was one of the things I did. And then some command hooks on the side over there. But then I also, uh, to make it easier, Actually, it makes it easier to lift pots and pans or to get pots and pans out of here. It would be, it's nice to have this, a floor that's the same level as the opening. And when you get the van, it does not. So I built this false bottom, which you can also use to store, you know, if you have a, maybe an iPad or a small laptop. I, I think there's only one way it goes in. <laughs> and I never seem to get it in the right way. So now I just store uh, things like that I, oh, that's where that is. <laughs> See, you forget you have things. This is where I store my uh, hand mixer because I don't use it that often. 
and some of the, the plastic wrap, the aluminum foil, because I really don't use it all that often. And anyway, but you could store maybe a camera, an iPad, something that you, you know, I don't think most people would, if they're trying to steal from you, I don't think they'd look under there. If you're wondering what this is, uh, something I found somewhere along the line, but I use it to put our mosquito sticks. So we needed something that wasn't, wouldn't burn. Um, so mosquito sticks, and they actually work. I was really surprised. Um, that's what we, or you could put incense in there too, I guess. <laughs> Here at the sink, uh, one of the first things I did was I found this cut, a cutting board. And actually, it was the auto, it was Beach Auto Sound that cut it for me. They didn't charge me. They were doing all this other work, so <laughs> included in the $3,000. They just quickly cut this out because we had the old uh, Corian one and I love this because it's super lightweight the Corian was just too heavy and I can cut right on that and not have to worry and then inside here this is a um, colander got this idea from uh, Lori at the rally John remember um, and uh, she's now I forgot she's on she's on the, we got her on the board of the club but this is the colander and I keep all the cleaning supplies in there and it fits pretty nicely and then this uh, this idea came from also Lori and this uh, just you know to let the sponges dry because they can get pretty skanky the only thing you do have to be careful because when you turn this you can hit this and turn your water on accidentally so you kind of have to hold you have to use two hands to turn them at the same time this is just a flashlight people ask me sometimes what this is it's just a little flashlight we picked up at the Albuquerque balloon fiesta um, okay. What's that security over the window? Oh, thanks. I almost forgot. This is the uh, Pacavo security screen because it's been pointed out by people that to get in, all you'd need to do is open that louvered window on the outside because this opens you know, like that. And those are pretty easy to break into and somebody could easily just come in and lift up your lock and they're in your van. So um, this, this came from uh, Mark. Again, Mark gave me a great idea. Uh, to put that on there and I need to add one more screw I haven't done it because it rattles a bit but I took a drink cozy and shoved that in there and it stops the rattle and then uh, of course so many people use these uh, paper towel holders I'm thinking though of replacing the velcro because the velcro does sometimes start to drop down I'm thinking about putting um, magnets using magnets to keep it on instead now that I've found these super strong magnets, they're neodymium magnets. My brother says they're only, they only come from China. They're the only ones that, I guess, have that material. But these things are so strong, they're almost dangerous. Uh, yesterday, we were working on the windshield thing, and I got two of these things pinched between my finger. And two of these guys pinched me between my finger, and it really, it drew blood. It, that's how strong these suckers are. So I think I could probably attach, uh, attach a couple of these up here and it would hold this thing in place. We'll give that a try later. Okay, what else, John? What else, what else, what else up here? Want to show me those command hooks that are already installed? Oh, uh, we got command hooks everywhere. Um, right yeah, yeah, I got one back here. That was there. You know, everybody knows about those. Uh, you can use these little... Before we took out the booster, I was routing the wires through these little uh, cable channel things. And I do run this one. This is, oh, let's move on to the refrigerator. Why don't you go up that way? Okay. So there are two things that I recommend if you have a, a refrigerator. <laughs> and one of them is the sensor push. This is an absolute must. And, and people... You know, when they tell me that their refrigerator works perfectly, they don't have any problems at all, I'm always a little skeptical because we were out camping with Mark and Susie, and he said his refrigerator was just great. And I said, well, let's put my sensor in there, and, and we'll see. And we left it in there, I don't know, maybe 12 hours, whatever it was, and it was much warmer than he realized because it, it was a hot day that day. So if, you don't, if you're not able to monitor your refrigerator you know, second by second, which this thing will do, and do it remotely so you can check on your phone. 
then you really don't know what the temperature is inside your refrigerator. So I highly recommend one of those. They're only $50. And then the second thing that we did find help because the Titan fan that we hooked to the outside vent to help draw air out and keep it cool, I just, I really couldn't see a difference in there. But I do notice a difference uh, when I plug in an interior fan, especially, you know, one of the worst things you can do with these three ways is to put um, too much food in there and then the air doesn't circulate. So in our rig, now I doubt if most people have this opportunity, but this is a, this is a USB charged fan. You can get these battery operated too, but there's a, we have a USB outlet right there so I can plug it in and keep it right here so that uh, the air can circulate more easily in there and keep things cooled down. And then I just rigged up some Tinnerman nuts on the back of this tree. And I've, you know, I've tried uh, different arrangements in here. This one has worked as well as any. These, uh, these shelves, I had to actually order extra shelves because these Dometic shelves always crack right here. So I have two of these and they're not cheap. I wish, I, I don't really quite remember. I had to get, I had to get one that I didn't need. Um, but you know, as soon as I get a new one, the other one cracks. So, uh, the, this is a really weak point in these Dometic refrigerators. So, so if you, you know, play around with the arrangement in the refrigerator, you might find something else works better. And then this little tray, I kind of like that for help, helping to keep things from getting, um, too disorganized. This, this slips over here and onto there. And also at the end of this video, I will give you an update on um, our plans for the new refrigerator. Okay, let's go, let's move back. As most of you know, I've made my own warm window curtains uh, for the van and we love them. They keep it cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter and they black out the sun when you're up above, you know, up in the northern regions. So those have been great. and. Uh, the other thing I did just recently was um, I showed you kind of a really ugly hack the other day and I finally got my filler. These are door filler strips and I just screwed into the wood frame here of this, uh, whatever they call these bolsters and using these really strong magnets. I'm hoping that even on a somewhat rough road, it will keep these bolsters in place because the way that uh, you know, the way they're doing it now with the Velcro is just, nobody's going to do that. It's just too much, too much hassle. So I've done that on both sides. And then uh, back here we have these gap filler, these gap filler trays. This idea also came from Lori at the rally. Uh, there's, there are also larger ones. I'll, I'll link both. Uh, I'll have both the large and the small in my, on my Amazon page. But you can look around and, and maybe find something that even suits you better. But I like those, especially at nighttime, for keeping our little mighty light. This, this is awesome. Was this Lori or Jennifer? This might have been Jennifer. I don't remember. Anyway, love these little mighty bright lights. And especially because this is a warm white and not a cool white. Now, John, on the last trip, he, was, he found these, uh, these charging cords that will do basically everything. And so this is the lightning, the lightning connector. If you're an Apple ecosystem person, the micro USB uh, charger, the C charger. And so all my devices are different and I have so many, I, I decided to get two more of these so I didn't have to have so many cords back here. So that's been great. Uh, and then I also keep, um, well, actually I should back up a second. One of the things I did was I, replaced the USB ports on both sides with uh, this kind that you plug in a, you would plug in a socket, the socket kind of cigarette charger. Yeah, it's for 12 volt devices. So if you had like a portable refrigerator, you'd plug it into that. But I did that so that I would be, so I could then plug in this device, which plugs, uh, which charges my laptop because it's a C, a C charger. And uh, it has to be something that's higher voltage, otherwise it 
you know, it'll, it doesn't keep up with the amount of power that those laptops draw, especially when you're using your, when your process, processors are screaming because you're trying to edit video. So uh, the only downside to these, to this style is that you have to, um, you have to make sure it's connected. So sometimes, you know, after you've been driving, things can become disconnected from all the bumping around. And uh, let me show you also the kind that we have in the front. So up front, we have this style of charger, and it has three ports for the old-fashioned USB chargers and two for the 12-volt, um, and that's for the, the front. So that we could, I guess, if we wanted to, we could then stick one of these in there and, and have even more. But you, ex you get to a point where you're pulling too much and it doesn't do anything very well. And another idea that came from Mark was these anything keepers. And we have one on each side and uh, keep little odds and ends up there. Extra pair of glasses. I have my, uh, oh, our son gave this to me. And it is a kind of interesting. It's a little two shooter. <laughs> It's a pepper spray two-shooter. Don't take these to Canada, though. They're not legal. Um, and so if you, you know, had a bear encounter or a bad dog encounter, you could pull that out, and it'll shoot two things of pepper spray. Or if you have a bad husband encounter. <laughs> OK, so that's the anything keeper. And then, of course, the hammock, which I mentioned last time, for pillows and jackets and such. And, and then uh, up here, I've done some little stupid little shelves, but they keep things, uh, we, you know, we keep our stuff sacks, any kind of trays, things like that. And that helps to keep those organized, to have that on each side. These are motion sensor lights. I wish the... the I wish the magnet were a little bit stronger, but these are great for um, nighttime when you open the cupboard and you can actually see in them. I've now ordered, uh, I have four of them now. They come in as a two-pack, and those have worked out really well. I mentioned this last time when I was talking about the uh, WeBoost versus the MiFi, um, the MiFi jet pack, and it's interesting that uh, Keep Your Daydreams talked about it yesterday in their video you know, which which one was, I don't know if it was better, but should you get this one or should you get that one? And uh, this is the $30, I think it's a $30 antenna that really makes that MiFi $40, $49. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, John. This is the, uh, that MiFi antenna, it's $49, but it makes that jet pack just pick up signals that the WeBoost wouldn't pick up and gives you better reception and everything. So if you have a jet pack, then if you have the need for a jet pack, like I do, uh, this is the way to go. And then the last thing over here is I'm, I, I have a really, I'm really sensitive to light. And so I keep this over the, um, this control panel for nighttime so that, and it, see, it says zero, 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 zero. That's good. Keep that over there so that I don't get any light if it comes on in the middle of the night. Here's something that didn't work, really. I got this Luma Noodle for the back of the TV. I thought it would be interesting lighting for the back. And it's supposed to, and it plugs into a USB, plugs into a USB port. So if I go like this, um, it works. But as soon as you turn the TV on, it goes off. So don't know what's up with that, but there, that, that's what that is. <laughs> Almost forgot my new drawer insert that most of you have probably already seen, but I think I'm going to really like having this extra level so everything, I mean, it's, all, it's a mess, but it's a neater mess. It's an easier mess to find things in. So that's that. We have been through lots of renditions of floor mats. <laughs> and I saw this one online a few weeks ago and decided I'd give it a try and order it. The problem with a lot of the floor mats is that they don't clear the door, though they might be too thick, um, or they don't stay in place, you know, and you're, you trip over them with your feet. 
So I thought I'd try this one. It's super thin, super thin. But so far, it's staying in place pretty well. So I'll, I'll give you an update on that down the road. Some people have used those, uh, those kind of foamy blocks that lock together and filled it out. I know Pam, who I've, I've met down here before, she's done that. And I had ordered some, and the ones I got were too thick, so I couldn't do it. And uh, so anyway, it's just this is super easy because I can just lift the mat out and go out and, and shake it out and keep it clean. And then the other last thing, John, I, I did just recently was remove that faceplate at your feet um, because we don't use the table. We may someday put in one of those uh, lagoon tables, but it's not, it's just not important to us right now. My favorite trash arrangement has been these Looney's trash holders, and I order trash rack bags. They're five gallon bags. I have to get them online, but those bags are nice and sturdy and they hold more than obviously the three or four gallon. And I keep one here and one in the bathroom. Okay, and then I think, uh, I think the last thing is where we store our, most people store their charging or their, their electric cable in the garage, but we store ours underneath the seat here. Oh, and there's the ceramic heater. You were right, that's where it was. So we store our cable in there and the ceramic heater that we use only when we're on shore power and that works really well to to keep the when you're you know camping in the winter that helps a lot and that was to replace another smaller heater that we had that had a cord but this one just uh, the reason i like this one is it just fits right into right underneath the sink um, and this thing is uh, adjustable so you can turn it whatever direction you need So, uh, if you do install one of these, so this is what I took out of the vehicle. And if you do install one of the 9 volt socket types, make sure you get the polarity right. You don't want to screw up your electrical system. Okay, so. So, I think that's it. And um, I, but I do want to ask the question for our viewer, which uh, was, it's kind of funny he asked me, uh, but he, he and his wife both play golf and they have a uh, new, I think it was a Lexor, or they've just taken ownership or they're about to take ownership. He wants to know if I had any ideas on where he can store his golf clubs. Now, if it were my money, I would leave the golf clubs at home. <laughs> but that's because, you know, that's one of those things couples Typically, if only one plays golf, they have an issue about golf clubs are always in the way or in the trunk of the car or whatever. Uh, so if you guys have an idea of where, if you play golf, where do you store your golf clubs or um, you take them with you or, you know, any advice you have for those golfers out there and where they can, they can put their golf clubs. Or if you rent them when you get places, but some people, you know, they're not going to rent golf clubs. Uh, it's a awfully nice set of clubs when you rent them, but it course yeah so um, anyway that is it on the outside and hopefully I can get this thing edited tonight and then we can get off to Joshua Tree tomorrow oh I almost forgot I was going to give you an update on the refrigerator so we have decided to move forward on replacing the refrigerator with a uh, with a uh, isotherm 115 free line it's slightly larger but there are lots of issues, and this is not going to be, I do not think this is going to be easy. Pleasure Way has been a tremendous help. They've sent me pictures of inside the cabinet. There is a vent pipe that goes right, right up the back and is a problem. Our new refrigerator may have to stick out an extra little bit in order to make this work. We, we're going to have to make possibly a few cuts in certain places as soon as I find out what's below them. And uh, anyway, it's, uh, but... In doing this research, uh, another viewer is going to be doing the same thing. And uh, I was concerned about how to get this refrigerator out because George at Humble Road, who is going to do a video on his, his change that he did on his Pleasure Way XL or I forgot what he has. The plateau, is that the next, is that the one that's longer, John? The plateau? 
Okay. And, uh, but he hasn't posted that video because he's been really busy trying to finish the van for uh, Carry On Vagabond. But he said, he told me that he had a real, it was a real struggle to get his refrigerator out. And so I was a little concerned about that. And uh, fortunately, this other person, Doug, up in Oregon, has, uh, so we're kind of collaborating. And I've sent him all the information I get, and he helps me. And he said he was able to get his out. Finally, he ordered maybe some special tools to do it, but he was able to get his out. And so as soon as I can find out from uh, the company that we're going to order this from, the availability and price and all of that, we'll get it ordered. And, you know, obviously I'll do a video on it in case anyone else is interested. But I'm just, you know, really hoping it doesn't turn out to be a complete disaster. I guess if worse comes to worse, we can uh, put the old Dometic back in. But we'll see. We'll make it work somehow, hopefully. Anyway, that's it this week. And I hope you guys are able to get out on the road again pretty soon. I mean, if Joshua Tree is open, that's, that's a good sign. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.